Greetings, RC model geeks. And here we are in the shed yet again for part 35 of the Sarik Hobbies de Havilland Canada chipmunk build. Right, well, today I've uh, just glued on the horizontal stabiliser to the fuselage. I just needed to get that out of the way. Um, so basically I just jigged it on the bench here, um, got it weighted down so it won't move and then I glued a couple of blocks down to the bench here that the tail plane could butt up to once I you know, lined it up all right first and then glued those blocks in as stops so that I could get some repeatability when I put the glue on and put the uh, the tail plane back in there. So that is all gluing off lovely jubbly. In fact, I think the glue's probably gone hard now. I just epoxied that in there. So that is all good. Um, what else are we gonna do today? Oh yes, 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 yes. Piano wire and bending with heat. There's a bit of piano wire. Now this is uh, what size is that? Let's uh, zero out the uh, the reader. Right, that's uh, that's just over three mil. That one, so that's imperial. Now I bent this with heat this morning. Okay, and then afterwards, I retempered it. Okay, and there is nothing wrong with this piece of metal. And you'll see in the next bit of video um, where I put this bit that I'd uh, retempered in the vise and gave it a good old tug. And I bent this to over 45 degrees and back again. And it didn't break because I retempered it and it's easy to do. You only have to do a quick Google, you can find loads of info on retempering piano wire. And that is what I did. And there is nothing wrong with that. So my undercarriage isn't going to snap off, my joiner for the elevator halves isn't going to break. Right, I thought I would do a quick demonstration here. Now, there's been a few comments that I'm talking shit uh, about bending piano wire with heat and then re-tempering it. So, this piece of wire here, I have bent with heat. And then I've re-tempered it. Okay, so I'm gonna grab the end of this wire and I'm going to pull it up it's that joint there that I bent, right? Ready? Here we go. Look at that. Am I talking shit? No. There you go. I retempered that. It took me a couple of minutes. It was easy. Yeah, no way is that breaking. Look at it. Yeah, I'll bend it back down. Am I talking shit? Nah. There you go. So, there you go. Um, there is nothing wrong with this method as long as you do it right. So what are we going to do next? Um, I don't know yet. I might just stick in the vertical, uh, uh, the, um, the dorsal fin actually. Might put that in next and then when that is done, we can put in the uh, vertical stabiliser. Or I might put the vertical stabiliser in first, um, one way or t'other. 
um, that is getting glued on there hopefully today. So I'll come back to you when I've done something. Right, I'm bored this afternoon. So as it's one of those afternoons, I'm going to show you how to retemper this bit of metal. So I've just made another bend in that, yeah? That piece I was playing with earlier, bend right there. It's cooled down. All we're going to do is we're going to clean that bend up now so it's nice shiny metal. Yeah, you do a bit of sandpaper, do whatever you want, yeah? Rub it in your hands. A bit of sandpaper. Yeah, because we want nice shiny metal because we're going to be looking at the colour of the metal when we get it hot. Okay. Right, there you go. There is a bit of metal cleaned up. Now I'm gonna go and put that back in the vise and I'm gonna heat it up and temper it. And I'm gonna video doing it. Right, okay, doing this one-handed. There's the piece of metal. Now all we're gonna do is heat this up. Until we get a blue colour in the metal. That'll probably do. And then we're going to let that cool down naturally. Right, okay. That's cooled down. Now I'm going to pull it. Look at the bend I'm putting on that. Eh? Look, my hand's shaking. I'm pulling so hard on it. There you go. That is how you do it. Yeah? Simple. Don't believe the hype. Okay, so vertical fin glued in. Perfect. Next thing, dorsal fin. We'll put that in, we'll glue it on there like that, whack it on there like that. Now if you remember I said we're going to make a, um, a lifer plate uh, cover for this joint so we're not too worried about that as long as it butts up. Um, we're leaving a little gap uh, here that is so we can get the uh, the sort of T-pin that is on the canopy uh, in and out of that track. If, for example, we wanted to take the canopy right off, we can slide it slightly forward and it will come out of that gap. Bob's your uncle. So I'm going to get that glued on now. Okay, so dorsal fin all glued on everything lined up perfect so I suppose now we can have another look at this baby the uh, the canopy with its uh, little T thing there that we made and then that will just quite nicely slot in there slide back there you go and then the two side clips will pop in there and there we go. Oh, she don't want to go back. What have we done wrong there? That's been working fine for the last couple of days. Where's that catching? There must be a little bit there or something.
There we go. One sliding canopy. So it's uh, coming uh, together. Let's have a look at a side view, shall we? See if we can. Uh, there we go. So yeah, that is getting there. Then we can have it cracked open like that. See the screw at the back is ideal for sliding the canopy. So yeah, it's all uh, it's all starting to look the part. There's the tail down there. Yeah, it's coming together quite nicely. Right, <clears throat> that's it for the day. I uh, don't know what we're doing tomorrow. Oh, do you know what? We might join the fuselage together, I suppose. Um, oh no, I've still got to do the. I've got to connect up the um, the uh, push rods, of course. Uh, at the same time, we glue the fuselage together. So uh, yeah, we've got to do that. We've also got to uh, sort out the tail or the tail cone that will go at the back there. Uh, and also this infill in the middle, I've made that, but uh, that's got a slot in there, like that. Then there's a dorsal, a little fin that goes in here. Uh, I've started to make that, which is this bit here. That's got a slot in there like that and then there is the tail cone itself which is that that I've started to make now I made that uh, just by gluing a block onto the uh, rear of the fuselage and then just following the shape and sanding the whole thing to shape um, on the drawing they call for this and this to be one piece now, you know, you might be an expert carver, but that's going to be a nightmare. So hence, I did it in two bits, because it was easy to make that out of one bit. And it's easy to make that out of one bit, and then join them together. Trying to get that curve there would be a right nightmare if you had that already glued on there. So yeah, make make that tail section in two bits, get it pretty accurate, and then stick it on, you know, and you can finally fettle it. But I have sanded that exactly to uh to the shape of the fuselage. Yeah, uh so there you go. It's uh it's it's getting there. So don't forget, have a look at Sarek Hobby's uh website. Um they got loads of stuff on there. Somebody was telling me, was it? I think it was Ray, Ray, who did the second half of the wing drawing for me. Uh, he came over yesterday, and uh, I think he was saying he's bought some hovercraft uh, plans from uh, from Sarek, and he's going to be building that. So that uh, will be quite interesting as well. Um, yeah, go and have a look at Sarek Cobby's uh, website. Uh, don't forget the big shed fund um, more news coming soon but I can tell you uh, with the money that I've chucked in there as well we're just under two thousand pounds so it is getting there and it is gonna happen so if you want to uh, join in and donate your one pound fifty or whatever uh, the link is in the description Right, see you all tomorrow. Bye. Thank you for watching Captain Rob's RC Model Geeks. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to click that like button. If you want to see more of the same type of videos, don't forget you can subscribe. If you want to support us, you can use PayPal. PayPal.me forward slash RC model geeks if you want to contact us you can email us 
rcmodelgeeks at gmail.com. We look forward to seeing you in the next video.